This is a support video for chapter three, which is our chapter on how to make sure that the color is acceptable before we enter the picture postcard workflow. There's a big warning in that chapter, which I'm going to repeat, and that is this is the most difficult chapter of all for beginners. Uh, it requires a disciplined approach, and also the rewards are not immediately evident a lot of the time. What we're going to be doing is looking at pictures to see if there's anything that's obviously wrong with them. And if there is, we will fix it. The problem is that in probably the majority of pictures, and maybe more if they come from studios, there isn't any problem. So we have to just look for things, conclude that there's nothing wrong, and move on. But if we do find something that's wrong, then we have to fix it. Um, there are usually many ways of fixing it. Sometimes we can make it a little better, sometimes we can fix it altogether. Many possible different approaches, and I'm not saying that this one is the best, but we want to do things fairly rapidly. We want to make a very rapid assessment. We want to be done within 10 seconds knowing whether there's going to be any work done at this point or not. Um, and so I have a couple of examples for you. First, I'm going to start with one that's not in the book just because I think it's sort of typical of the challenges you might find with outdoor uh, photography generally. And this is a picture of an SUV in the desert. This is the original capture. It looks fairly reasonable. All the colors appear um, at first glance to be reasonable. Um, but I'm going to measure to make sure. To do that, I'm going to need the info palette here. Um, I'm going to need a couple of other things first because I see I'm, I'm going to be using the eyedropper tool and I want to change the Photoshop default away from point sample to 3.3 average to get a little bit better reading on the points that I'm going to be mousing over. Here's the info palette, which I'll be referring to a lot. Um, and it's too big for me. I want to get rid of some of these surplus hints and document sizes. Okay, and I'm going to make the second color readout, instead of being CMYK, which is the Photoshop default, I'm going to make it LAB. Um, the, the left hand part of the info palette reads RGB, reads the actual color. And this is an RGB file, so it reads RGB. Um, the right hand side, which I can also adjust with the eyedropper here, is going to read LAB. Now I'm going to use LAB to try and evaluate the colors here. Um, what colors do I know? What colors can I say are wrong? Um, we have certain recommendations and also we have certain common sense things to worry about. We're going to be dealing with two channels. One is the A, which is magenta versus green. The other is the B, which is yellow versus blue. Um, we have a sky here, and I have some recommendations on skies. Uh, skies are blue. That means that they are negative in the B channel. How negative they are, I can't tell you. This one here, according to the info palette, reads minus 27 in the B. Perfectly sensible. In the A, which is magenta versus green, a negative number is green, and a positive number is magenta. Usually in skies, it's really neither one. It could be... Um, it could be a zero, which would be neither magenta nor green, but which would just be a blue. Um, if it is not zero, usually it's a little bit on the green side. Occasionally it's very slightly on the magenta side. So I sort of use as a guideline anything between about a minus five and a plus two. Uh, so this one here, it's a minus five in the A channel, meaning it's uh, somewhat to the green side of blue. That's acceptable for a sky. It is suspiciously green, though. Okay, the background here is somewhat yellow. I don't know how yellow it's supposed to be. And it's probably somewhat warm also. But I'm seeing some blueness back here. That doesn't seem right. Okay, where right where my cursor is, there's a minus five in the B channel. That says this, this background is blue. I don't believe it. Um, here, in the foreground uh, sand, I'm seeing that it's pretty neutral. Actually, this, this point here is somewhat more green than it is magenta. So that's kind of cold, too. Now, what about the, the SUV itself? What color is it supposed to be? Um, I think you'd have to be bold to say that it's a silver color. That's probably what it is. It's probably a gray. But a lot of these cars can be somewhat on the blue side, too. And we really don't know. Now, just in looking at it, it seems to me that there's, there's some yellow sunlight being reflected over here. But is the rest of the car, um, should it be neutral, which would be approximately zero, 0 maybe a little bit on the warm side? Or is it biased towards blue? As we get back here in the rear door, we see a minus 16, a minus 16 in the, um, in the B channel. That's seriously blue. So that's such a high number, I have to think that it's natural. I have to think that this is 
really a bluish car. But I don't believe this minus three in the A channel. I think that's got that's got to be wrong. It says that the car is more green than it is magenta. I I can't think that's right. If it's if it's blue, it should be a pure blue. Okay. I don't really know much about the blueness of this car other than I'm saying it's probably not a gray car. But I do know the tires are gray. So I go in here to the tire and I see, well, this is a little bit blue. Okay, that's wrong. And it's a little bit green. That's wrong too. Okay, maybe the, the hubcap assembly here ought to be neutral too. And that's saying just about the same thing. So there are a whole bunch of, of hints here that this picture is too cold, even though in looking at it, it seemed like it was all right. Now, how do we fix a picture that's too cold? It depends on how careful you want to be. Um, if you lighten the red channel, then um, that will make the picture a little bit warmer. So let me just do that. This is, this is easy. This is not uh, the way that I'd recommend doing it. I'm going to put it on a layer, command them to bring up the curves dialog box. I'm going to go to the red channel, click here on the tire, and this is not my preferred orientation for curves, incidentally. I'm going to go this way so that I have darkness to the right, darkness to the top. I click here to find where the tire is located in the red, lighten this red channel, maybe like that, and my prediction is this will make the picture look a little bit better. Um, to be sure, I'm, I'm going to change this to color mode, and the reason I change it to color mode is I don't want the, um, the detailing of the picture to change. I don't want to be deceived by seeing that the picture is lighter or darker than what I expect. I just want to change the color. So like this. And now here's a before and after. This is the original, and this is with the color shift. And that has to be better. It's a lot more typical of what you might find in the desert, no? Um, you can pick that apart if you want to, and I could. I could say now it looks a little bit too purple as far as the car is concerned, but that's because I wasn't very careful. Um, I will now try and do it the right way. Okay, I'm going to eliminate that, and I'm going to put an adjustment layer on it instead. Um, first, I'm going to uh, find out a little bit about this picture um, with the color sampler. I'm going to find a few points that I'm going to look at. I guess basically the tire, the rear of the car, and the sky, and here some of the metal. My practice is usually to go from lightest to darkest, so I'm going to click one point here, and as I do, you'll note in the info palette that it expands. Okay. Now another one, say, in the rear of the car, another one in the sky, and finally one in the tire. Um, I can have these in whatever color space I want to. Um, I think I'll change this, the sky to LAB. I can interpret that a little bit better. Um, the RGB, I could leave those alone because I'm sort of shooting for um, equal values in there. Equal values in RGB result in a neutral. So let's see if we can do that. I'm going to use the, um, the uh, PPW panel to add an adjustment layer like this, and this uses the traditional Photoshop curves rather than the curves uh, that were introduced in Photoshop CS4, which I don't like very much. And I'm going to do a little adjusting here. Okay, now you notice that point one, which is the, uh, the hubcap, the metal there, is 176, 176, 176, which is just about right. Okay, the back of the car, how did that, did that fix it? I'm going to change that to LAB to find out. The back of the car says it's a little bit blue, which I think we accept, and it's slightly green, which we don't. Okay, now the sky also says that it's more green than I would really like. And the tire, I'll change that to LAB too, the tire is slightly blue. So still, although we've, we've made an improvement, the picture is now a little bit warmer than it was, we're still a little bit off. So I'm now going to, to uh, lighten the red channel as before and see what that does for it. Well, now that makes the, the hubcap too warm. So there we go. Now that's more or less neutral. 
The background of the car is now a pure blue. Notice the zero in the A channel. Uh, that is neither magenta nor green. Therefore, what we have in the background is blue. Good. Okay. The sky value, that's within recommendations. The tire is still somewhat too blue. So hopefully this will, will be my last step. Okay. And see, so I'm watching this, these numbers here. Now the tire is just slightly to the warm side of neutral, and I believe that because it is so sunny. So we'll now check everything again. Sky is good. Car became very slightly green as a result of this. Um, and here we're slightly warm. And this will be my final move, I do declare. Just a slight move in the A channel, which is going to make it a little darkening the green channel, makes, adds a little bit of magenta and therefore it's zeroed out this point here. So I'm done, except for changing it to color. And now we see what a careful correction has done. There's before, there's after. And now the car is somewhat of a neutral blue, just a bluish gray, as opposed to a picture that's overly blue like this. So that's an example of how you think about color to begin with. It doesn't look like a big deal. It will become a big deal if you start to enhance color in this picture later on. Because if you start off with a blue cast like this, it may be a slight blue cast. It may be hard to see. But once you start adding color to this picture, it's going to become very visible and very offensive. I now want to move on to one of the pictures that's actually found in Chapter 3. Um, this is a fairly complicated uh, color move. This is this picture of, um, of the Swiss scene, the Swiss city of Lucerne, which is found in figure 3.1 through 3.3. Okay. Um, I want to stress here, I'm not duplicating the, act, the moves that I made in um, chapter 3. I'm looking at it again fresh. Uh, I presume that I'm not going to make the same exact curves that I did before, but the, sa the same ideas will be in place. First, I, I'd kind of like to know in this picture, where is the lightest points? Some of these light points I can afford to blow away. Like, for example, this point here in the flag, I don't really care whether it holds detail or not. Eventually, it can blow out. Um, so I just want to know whether I should ignore that or not. The preferred way of finding out is to um, set up a threshold adjustment layer. Go like this and find out what are the literally lightest and darkest areas of the picture. Okay, that should give us enough information. I'm going to reduce the opacity of the layer to find out what I'm really looking at. So really any of these areas could be the natural highlight of the picture. And what is it that I'd like to preserve? I guess I'm going to... Um, I'm, I'm going to choose this area of the flag. So I'll discard this point, or I'll discard the uh, adjustment layer. Color sampler point here. Color sampler point where else? Maybe in the clouds, because the light parts of clouds are generally, you, you want them to be somewhat um, more neutral than the camera catches them. The camera often finds them rather blue. So I'm going to click here. And you notice uh, in the info palette, it says that the, um, this cloud measures minus 3 in the A. That means it's more green than it is magenta, which is pretty sick, I think. Um, minus 10 in the, in the B, that's somewhat blue. It's not unexpected. It's not necessarily bad. How about here in this Swiss flag? Uh, that's, that's fairly neutral, according to the info palette. That's, that's not too bad. Okay, anything else that I want to look at? How about the concrete here, the cement? You expect that should be slightly neutral, but I really hate to see that it's green. Um, it's minus one in the A channel, that's, that's somewhat green. Okay, I don't like that. How about some of the darker areas, like here? This also is cold. Okay, in, in, right here in, the, in this building in the background, we have a sort of a shadowy area there. And I would expect that it would be nice if that was neutral, zero, zero, or possibly a little bit warm, because we do have somewhat of a sunny day here. You can tell that from the shadows. So I'd like to neutralize that. Okay, I'm going to put a point there as well. And that should 
give me enough to work with, I think. So I'll add an adjustment layer. And what can we do? Well, this, this, this white here already is correct, all three numbers being equal. Then the, uh, the second, which is the, um, which is the concrete, I believe. Yeah, that shows up as a little bit green, so I don't like that. I'm going to lighten the red channel and then evaluate. Okay, now it's showing up as very warm. So apparently my move was a little bit too, uh, too severe there. Okay, now it's a little bit warm. Okay, I'll, I'll live with a little bit warm. And how about the... Um, oh, oh, my mistake. This is the cloud. All right. This is the cloud that I was speaking of. But the same thing would go for it. I don't want it to be green. So there. And in fact, I don't particularly want it to be blue. So I'll reduce the blueness of it by adding, by darkening the blue channel, making it a little bit more yellow. And now I'll bring the red channel into the play. I just want to make it more neutral than it was. And see, this is doing it. Minus, it started out minus 3, minus 10, and I want to move everything more positively. So positive 1 in the A, minus 7 in the B may not be great, but it's better than it was. Okay. Now, how about in my shadow down here? Still a little bit cold. So, I don't like those negative numbers there in, in number three. So, I'm going to move this thing down. And darken the, uh, the blue channel to make it a little bit more yellow. And that should solve our problems. I want to look at this white again. Um, see, in changing all these other things, the white got a little bit off. You can see why this is the toughest part of color correction. Because you have to keep your eye on a lot of things, all of which affect the others. Okay, now, these three numbers are pretty close, so we're, we're going to have sort of a nice white there in the flag. Then the cloud, it's neither magenta nor green, I like that. Um, and it's slightly blue, I don't think that is necessarily bad because it isn't really light, it's not a really white cloud. And then uh, the shadow is uh, kind of um, a warm color. So let me click OK, let's see what we have. Change the color mode. There's before, there's after, and you can clearly see how a cast was eliminated there. This thing here, this original picture, was too blue, and this one proves it. So now we would go on and correct this picture using all the other parts of the PPW, um, and if we'd left this blueness in, we would be in big trouble right about the time we started to add color to it. And you can see that we are going to have to add color to this picture because these reds here are not very intense. Um, so we will eventually need something um, that's going to boost everything, and having a blue cast to begin with will wreck things for us. So, that's uh, a, a good example of why the, um, the first curves are, can be a critical step. I remind you again that many pictures don't have these kind of problems, and it's up to you to examine them carefully to see whether there is the kind of problem that requires the intervention that I just have done.